This is a plastic bottle. This is a person. This is the Empire State Building. And this is how much plastic is currently in the oceans. In 2019, there was an estimate of 171 trillion pieces of plastic floating in the oceans. A number that went up from 16 trillion in 2005, and it's probably even higher today. I don't know if you're like me, but when I hear these big numbers, they don't mean much to me. Our brains were not made to visualize numbers this big. Our eyes can see the equivalent of about half a billion pixels. It's literally impossible to see a trillion of anything. Your eyes just run out of pixels. I started the video with this cube to get your attention, but when I look at it, I don't know what it means. So here's my proposition. I'm going to help you understand what these figures mean using numbers that we can actually understand. And I'm also going to show you how much plastic is inside your body as you're watching this video. In order to understand the cube, we should understand where all this plastic is coming from. In 2010, we produced 270 million tons of plastic and made 275 million tons of waste. Our waste can be bigger than the yearly production because it can include production from previous years. However, like I said, these big numbers don't mean much to me, so let's turn them into something that I can actually understand. In 2010, the world population was about 7 billion. If we divide the waste by that number, we get an average of about 40 kilos or 88 pounds of plastic waste per person. That's the average waste per person in the world in 2010. About one third of this waste is generated near the coast. About one third of that waste amount is not managed properly, meaning it's at risk of leakage or loss. And about one fourth of that ends up in the oceans every year. Let's see how much that is. Our oceans cover about 361 million square kilometers. If we take all this garbage and divide it by that number, we get about 2.2 grams of plastic per 100 square meters. What does that mean? It means that if we took an average piece of the ocean of 10 by 10 meters, we would be dumping about 2 grams of plastic into that square every year. The equivalent of a small plastic cup. Just to make it clear, this square represents an average piece of our oceans. And in 2010, we were throwing the equivalent of one small plastic cup every year into that square. We do have to keep in mind that the average ocean depth is more than 3 kilometers, which means that there's some space for this plastic to disperse, but still, this is a lot. As the world gets more developed and more populated, our plastic consumption increases. In 2021, the global plastic production was about 391 million tons. I was not able to find recent data for all the waste cubes, but in 2016, it was estimated that we were dumping 21 million tons of plastic into the oceans per year, which means the number already doubled since 2010. All these cubes add up, which is how we ended up with the first cube I showed you, a total of over 100 million tons of plastic currently in the oceans. In our small piece of the ocean, we would find 38 grams of plastic. That's more or less the equivalent of a large plastic bottle. However, out of all this plastic, only about 2 million tons are floating. The whereabouts of the remaining waste is unclear, in what is known as the missing plastic problem. That's not going to be the main focus of this video, but in short, there are different theories to what happens to all this missing plastic. A. It breaks down into small particles that are incorporated into sediments or eaten by animals. B. The plastic is washed up or buried in our shorelines. And C. You might just be measuring it incorrectly. 2.3 million tons in the ocean is the equivalent to 0.6 grams in our square, which is the weight of one or two plastic straws floating around. However, there's a catch. This straw doesn't just float. It breaks. If a piece is between 1 and 4.75 millimeters, it's considered a large microplastic. As you can probably guess from the large adjective, these pieces also break. We're now talking about small microplastics, smaller than the width of a human hair. These pieces can break again, until we get what we call nanoplastics. And that is how we ended up with this number. And that's why in our square, we wouldn't have one or two straws floating. 
we would actually have 47 pieces of plastic, some of them too small to be seen with the naked eye. All this floating plastic is more concentrated in certain areas. There's a famous Great Pacific Garbage Patch, three times the size of France. Contrary to popular belief, it cannot be seen from space. The garbage is not dense enough to be visible from the sky, and most of it looks something like this. Even though it's the most famous large concentration of plastic, it's not the only one. This map shows the micro and macro plastic densities reported by about 1,000 stations in the oceans. The colors represent the number of pieces per square kilometer. This is part of the data they used in a study that came up with the first number I showed you, by the way. So yes, there is a lot of plastic concentrated in the North Pacific, but we can also find large concentrations in the Mediterranean Sea, North and South Atlantic, Indian Ocean, and South Pacific. In an earlier study from the same lead author, scientists made a model to estimate the plastic densities around the world. These red areas give you an idea of where most of the plastic is concentrated. In case you're wondering where this plastic comes from, 20% comes from marine sources, like fishing gear. 80% comes from land, mostly through rivers. A relevant note, about 80% of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is actually fishing gear. Also, not all countries pollute equally. Over 80% of the plastic emitted to the ocean comes from Asia, and the Philippines account for more than one-third of the world plastic pollution. The next question that comes to my mind is, what is the impact of all of this? There's a lot of ongoing research about this topic, and I even had to update the script during the making of this video because of new studies that became available. In short, before the last decade, it was believed that micro and nanoplastics were only a marine pollution issue. We now know that, one, that's not true. Microplastics have now been found in every environmental compartment on Earth, including fresh water, snow, ice, and even the air you breathe. Two, these plastics are ingested by thousands of species, including us humans, with harmful effects. In fact, as you're watching this video, there is plastic inside your body. I'll show you. Let's go back to the microscope. This study from 2021 came to the conclusion that an adult ingests, on average, almost 900 particles of plastic per day. Every day we eat, drink, and breathe this plastic. That's about 600 nanograms of microplastics, which, if you press into a cube, would have about the same thickness as a human hair. Most of them leave our body, but not all of them. If you're 18, there should be about 50,000 small microplastics irreversibly accumulated in your body. If you press them into a cube, it will still be visible to people with a good eyesight. The potential health impacts for the future are relatively unknown. Scientists have identified some of the health impacts on our body, but we'll have to wait for more studies to get a better picture. And it doesn't just affect humans, of course. The effects on wildlife can be divided into three categories. One, entanglement, which is responsible for the death of fish, seals, turtles, and birds. Two, ingestion. Animals can mistake plastic for food, and they can choke on it or spend precious energy on food with no nutritional value. Three, interaction. This includes collisions and abrasions that damage the coral reefs, plastic that blocks sunlight, and other forms of interaction with ecosystems. The point of this video is not to make you feel depressed, so what can we do? If you're wondering if we could just stop producing plastic, the answer is not that simple. Plastic is essential for many industries. And although it's true that the packaging sector generates the most plastic, the best alternatives aren't always clear. Plastic plays an important role in food safety, and it has other advantages. Take the example of grocery bags. According to this study, a single-use plastic bag causes less emissions than a cotton bag. If you don't reuse a cotton bag at least 52 times, you're actually releasing more emissions than if you just used 52 single-use plastic bags. Unbleached paper bags have lower emissions than plastic, but they use more water and cause more freshwater eutrophication, a form of water pollution. There are trade-offs, and there is no universal consensus on best and worst materials. You might also be wondering if you could simply clean up the oceans. That's what the Ocean Cleanup Organization is doing. Up to the first quarter of 2021, they had extracted almost 500 tons of trash from oceans and rivers. Which is great, but that number is still only 0.02% of our cube. Their capacity is planned to increase in the next years, but some scientists believe this effort is futile if we continue producing plastic waste at the same rate. Which makes sense. If we keep throwing trash into a swimming pool, we can hire a team to clean it up, but maybe the first question should be, why are we throwing trash in the first place? In the papers that I read, scientists actually focus on different recommendations. One, increase surveillance of the ocean. The more we track plastic pollution, the more we can control it. Two, the most important, tackle the problem at the source. What does that mean? Naturally, this includes A, improving waste management, especially in the countries that are most vulnerable. 
but also it includes b policies to address the economics of circular economy currently recycled plastic is more expensive than virgin plastic in the us alone only five to six percent of plastic gets recycled the lead author of this study argues that if rules were changed so that 75% of new packaging had to be made of recycled plastic, then the recycling processes would become more efficient and we would no longer be in a situation where virgin plastic is cheaper than recycled plastic. C. Increase producer responsibility. And D. Accelerate innovation in the plastic supply chain so we can develop new materials to replace single-use plastic. There's good news in all of this. If we look at the trend with the number of plastic particles in the ocean since 2003, it looks bleak but it doesn't tell the full story. The trend actually stagnated in the early 2000s, and the most likely explanation is the policies we implemented. Policies work. If I read a well-respected scientific paper and the conclusion says, we're at the turning point in history, my understanding is that we should really focus on choosing the right policies before it's too late. But let me know what you think in the comments. So there you have it. I hope this cue makes more sense now. Thank you for watching. If you like stories told with data, consider subscribing to the channel and thank you to our Patreons.